Tata has officially launched a much-awaited Ultros racer here in India. It is the more powerful version of Tata's B-segment hatchback and we will be driving it soon. But before that, in this video, you and I will be taking a detailed look at everything that you need to know about the Ultros racer. Not only that, alongside the Ultros racer, Tata has also launched two new variants for the Ultros lineup and has reject one. So we'll also take a look at that. You're watching Car and Bike, I'm Bilal and before we begin, here's a little reminder to like, share and subscribe to the Car and Bike YouTube channel. Let's begin with the variant first and the Ultros Racer is available in three variants which Tata has creatively called as R1, R2 and R3. Now the prices for the R1, it starts at 9.49 lakh rupees while the R2, it's 1 lakh rupees more, that's 10.49 lakh rupees. And finally, the range dropping R3, it retails at 10.99 lakh rupees, uh, which makes it the most expensive version of the Ultros that you can buy right now. The engine in question that puts the racer in the Ultros racer is the familiar 1.2 litre turbo petrol engine, which also does duties in the Nexon. It makes around 118 bhp and 170 Nm meter, and you can have it only with one gearbox choice, that's a 6-speed manual. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between the newly launched Ultros Racer and the previously available Ultros i-Turbo. Well, the i-Turbo also had the same 1.2 Revatron 3-cylinder turbo petrol engine, but its output was around 108 bhp and close to 140 Nm meter. Now with the arrival of the Ultros Racer, Tata has actually pulled the plug on the i-Turbo which wasn't selling in huge numbers. With the Ultros Racer, although the power has gone up, uh, the i-Turbo was available with a dual-clutch automatic transmission which is not the case with the Ultros Racer. Now in comparison, the only direct rival comes in the form of the i20 inline which also has a similar output of 118bhp and 172Nm. But apart from a 6-speed manual, the i20 N-Line is also available with a DCT automatic transmission. Now in terms of design, the Ultros Racer comes with three new paint schemes. There's a pure white, there's a venue grey and what you see in the picture is the atomic orange. Now unlike the i20 N-Line, the Ultros Racer doesn't come with sportier body kit to show off its sportier intentions. With the Razer, you do get a blacked out roof with a blacked out bonnet with a twin racing strip running down the center. You also get a more prominent roof mounted spoiler at the back and a blacked out treatment for the alloy wheels. You also get some more blacked out treatment on the side skirt and lower down the rear bumper, but that's about it. There's no sportier body kit or an aggressive looking bumper fore and aft or even an exhaustive sticking out at the back. Uh, in comparison, the i20 N-Line, it shouts out its sportier credentials. But what do you think about the sportier intention of both these hatchbacks? Do let us know in the comment section below. Now let's move on to the interior and there are some crucial feature additions which were required in the dated cabin of the Ultros lineup. But before we talk about the features, let's take a look at the racier bits that the Ultros racer gets. You get contrast orange finishes across the dashboard. There's also contrast finish on the steering uh, stitches. There's also a contrast orange around the gear lever and the leather upholstery. It also gets racing stripes. You also get orange ambient lighting. But uh, we are seeing the orange color exterior and I'm not sure if you choose a different exterior color, uh, the contrast bits inside the cabin will change. We'll have to wait slightly longer until we drive the car to know more about that. As for the features, the Ultros Racer gets some crucial ones. Right from the R1, you get a newer 10.25 inch touchscreen taken from the more expensive Tatas, which is much needed improvement over the floating unit offered in the standard Ultros. Since it's based on the fully loaded trim, the feature list includes 6 airbags, 16 inch alloy wheels, leatherette seat upholstery, wireless smartphone integration, projector headlamps and fog lamps, LED DRLs, 4 speakers plus 4 tweeters, electrically adjustable and auto folding ORVMs, cruise control, auto headlamps and rain sensing wipers. The R2 additionally adds a voice assisted electric sunroof, a wireless charger, a 7 inch all digital driver's display, a steering mounted control and a 360 degree camera. And finally the range topping trim gets you connected car tech, an air purifier and ventilated front seats which you don't get in the i20 N line. So that's the Ultros Racer, but in the myriad of Ultros variant lineup, 
Tata has additionally launched two new ones. Now these two variants are called XZ Lux and XZ Plus S Lux and are available with petrol manual, petrol automatic, diesel manual and CNG derivatives. Moreover, the XZ Plus OS variant is also upgraded with additional features. These features include an upgraded 10.25 inch infotainment system with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay for the XZ Lux along with 360 degree camera. And the XZ Plus S Lux variant also gets 6 airbags along with all the features of the XZ Lux. And lastly, the upgrades in the XZ Plus OS variant comes in the form of IRA connected carpet and an air purifier along with the above mentioned features. So that's all you need to know about the newly launched Tata Ultros Racer. We still wish it carried some more sportier bits to justify its racer credential, but that might happen when it comes to driving. So our detailed first drive impression would be dropping soon on our Car & Bike YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. And if you have any other questions regarding the Ultros, you can visit our website www.carandbike.com or you can write them down in the comment section below. Hope you liked this video and if you did, hit that like button and share it with your fellow enthusiasts. That's all for me in this video. This is Bilal signing off. Until next time.